In the black community, there are three types of hair stages, permed, transitioning, and natural. Permed is when your hair is chemically processed to make your naturally curl pattern to become straight. Transitioning is when your hair is growing out of the perm and you can either perform a big chop or casual trims to get rid of the permed hair. And lastly, natural hair is when you do not have any chemically processed hair that alters the texture of your natural state and you rely on products that are alcohol free and are made from natural products. With all these role models, at least those who are nothing more than their minions of the media, these beautiful blossoms, the perfect shade of flower girls are turning into provocative Barbie dolls. I must be foolish. No, juvenile. Who recollecting a time when I wanted to be a princess, but at least back when we were looking up to Cinderella and Rapunzel, we were aiming for royalty. Now, now we're just meant to be played with. Idolizing being fake and plastic, so I suppose that I would be crazy for opposing, let alone making a statement like, I was made in the hands of God. Why would I want to reduce myself to being made in China? <sighs> the lack of representation of black people on this campus, that's the reason why I made this club. Mm. I feel like now it's in, but before you see people stealing hairs, like white people stealing hairstyles, you know, cornrows, calling them boxer braids, um, bantu knots, calling them top knots and all that stuff, that's a bunch of nonsense. I feel like the media needs to start portraying black people here as black people here instead of giving these urban twists to them, because that'll make no sense. It's called cultural appropriation. We need to start taking back what's ours. Like, I didn't want to be seen every time I was in the room. And my hair, you know, made a difference or made a scene because everyone else was straight or tame, as people like to say. And so um, there were comments even, like, I used to straighten my hair constantly, like, with the, the flat iron that we put in the stove, the little oven. I used to flat my hair with that every single day and all the way up to high school. And if it was hot out, then I would just pull it back tight so you could, I was hoping, like, nobody could really see you when it's curly. And when I wouldn't have it straight, people would make comments like, oh, like, it looks better the other way, or um, why don't you like try to get a relaxer, or something like that. And it always made me feel like, oh, okay, well, this isn't good enough, I guess. So it, it was definitely uh, a journey getting to where I felt comfortable wearing my hair out like this. And I feel like what helped for me was college, honestly. Okay, so there was these two natural girls, natural hair girls at my church. And I remember them used to be in bald head, and the next, you know, they had this long hair. I was like, is that weed? There's like, no, I put natural. So that's how I wanted to become natural because they had long hair, and I always started out with long hair. And then I got a perm, and then my hair got short, so I wanted that back. So it was just like hmm, sophomore year in high school, I wanted to go natural, and then I got a perm senior year for my uncle's wedding, so I had to start all over again after senior year. So like May 2014, I started going natural again. Oh. It was like 2013. I think that's when he got married. May 2013, I went natural again. So I've been natural, I don't know how many years that is. So that's how long I've been natural since May 2013. Wait, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, I've been natural for, it's gonna be four years in uh, May of 2017. That's how long I've been natural for. So our first official event is the Fro Down. Um, we called different vendors, different people. Um, we had a photo booth set up, we have a makeup demo, we are making cards for children in the hospital, and we have henna, everyone loves henna. Um, oh yeah, and free food. Our vendors this year are Eden Bobby Works. They supplied us with um, full sizes of products to hand out to everyone at the event. Um, they're full size, not little cheap little samples. Well, since this is our first run, we just really hope it's successful. Like, I personally hope a lot of people come and enjoy themselves, and that'll help guide the path of how this throwdown event will go for future years. It'll be goal to have 60 people come, because we are happening the day before Easter. Everybody goes home on the weekend, so that's kind of scary that you're having a program the day before Easter. So if 60 people come, I'll be fine. Planning this event was a lot of work, but Brittany had it organized in a way that we all knew what we had to do to get the job done, so it was relatively easy. It was it was actually pretty good. It was organized. There was times it could be a little stressful, but it was actually pretty good. Brittany's so fun. I love Brittany. She makes everything like easy because at the end of the day, like we're all students. 
Um, sometimes it's annoying because, like, you know, she may feel like she's planning everything, but I just try to make sure I kept on top of the messages and stuff so I could, like, do my part as well. So I feel like when everyone did their own part, like, working together it was fine. But she definitely was really good at, like, planning and, like, pushing and, like, you know, delegating. So she, she stays on top of it. Well, we hope to have, like, a lot of people here and for people to come and have a safe place to talk about hair and be themselves. So how did you get in touch with Curly in college then? Uh, um, I saw them on Instagram, right? And then I went on the internet and started Googling natural hair clubs on different campuses. So I just decided to fill out their application one day and then they finally responded to me last year with it. So that's how we started. Nice, nice. Um, so explain how a typical club meeting goes. So boom, we have this list where each month we have a topic. So that person who has that topic, they have to plan the meeting. They then send the meeting information to the digital marketing chair who's supposed to make the flyer, but they don't make the flyers because I make the flyers. And then, <laughs> and then we put that on social media. We send out the uh, email for it. And then the meeting happens. I feel like there's not many cultural clubs on campus for black people, so adding this club gets more people to come out their rooms and say and not say that writer is so boring. I think it really helps because the fact that there's a club for this at all shows that there's a, there's a need and a want for this and there's numbers on campus of girls that are natural. And I think that it helps to have a community where everybody can get together and share their experiences. Um, I feel like this is going to become a safe place for people um, who are either natural or want to become natural to ask questions or talk about their journeys. I think it's just going to become a nice community for natural hair people and people who may, may not be natural and want to do it in the future or they have relaxed hair and want to know how to take care of that. So I just think it's going to be a good community. Um, I do want to see this program strive and become better than what I have started. Um, I just need to find someone who's like caring and dedicated to make this club move on to the next level. Like if this club gets known that everybody wants to come out to it, then that's all I really want, to get bigger and better. Um, for someone who is not natural, honestly, being natural isn't for everybody. It's a little expensive. Hair products ain't cheap. Um, but if you want to do it, I would say research because your journey would not be the same as someone else's journey. Um, it can cost money, but there's always alternative solutions to not having enough money to pay for stuff. Because you can always go um, creating your own stuff, which is cheaper. And what's your advice for someone who's transitioning? Um, do your research on things that will work for your hair, because what will work for your hair while you're transitioning would not work while you're natural. Um, pay attention to the ingredients. Um, do regular trims. Um, be afraid like I was always so nervous that's why I'm still transitioning for two years now but don't be afraid like if it's something you want to do make sure you reach out to get the resources you need so you know what you're doing um, if you're nervous like just really reach out to people because that's the only way like I was so nervous but I didn't reach out to anyone so I just kind of was like in the same place so definitely reach out to people and do the big chop if you have to, don't do the big chop. It's really like your personal preference. You don't have to do what everyone else does. Be patient. Don't expect your hair to do things that your hair can't do. Everybody's hair is different. Um, just love your hair through every stage and be patient because eventually once it's healthy, no matter what kind of curl pattern you have, you'll love your hair.